Washington. And welcome to the North Pole where big things are happening. It's an A-Day, regular schedule, and you're most likely losing your mind because there are only a few hours between you and your holiday break. We understand your excitement. It's pretty stressful here in Santa's workshop, too, as you can imagine. But keep it together, kids, and make sure the impression you leave your teachers is good. Because Santa is watching Miss Morrow and Miss Hayful. Now we better get our last announcements in before we all skedaddle on our ways for a much needed break. Just for funsies. <laughs> Let's do these announcements in the style of a great classic piece of literature. Twas the night before Christmas. Great idea! Yay! I'll keep wrapping gifts while you start. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the class not a teacher was stirring. Not even Mr. Haas. Leap activities were hung by the office with care in hopes that your sign-up sheets would soon be there. The children were all nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of wahawks danced in their heads. Seventh and eighth grade dance will start just after break, so you'd better get to attendance and sign up for your sake. When out in the gym, there rose such a clatter. We sprang from our work to see what was the matter. Away to the south gym, we flew like a flash. Tore open the double doors. And we're in, in a dash. It was the start of boys' basketball. They had provided the noise. They had their physicals in. And had signed up. These boys. <laughs> when what to my wandering eyes did appear? But five Washington spellers standing right here. They'll be spelling at Clark, and competition will be tight. Kareem Pitzer, Aaron Clemens, and of course, Moral right. Let's not forget Josh Ayers or Alexis Stotts. As for luck, they don't need it, but we wish them lots. Now Harold, now Marion, now Winthrop, and all in VPA. Go memorize and memorize and memorize away. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. You can memorize anywhere, but be safe and don't fall. Mrs. Gerdaff would also like students to think about mock convention, she said with a wink. So up to the LRC, the campaigners they flew during home base after the break to meet with her too. And then in a twinkling, I heard someone shout, Hey, what is Renaissance? What's that all about? As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the main stairs Mr. Byrne came with a bomb. He answered the question by letting the students know kids with A's, B's, and C's earn Renaissance for sure. <laughs> A bundle of t-shirts he had flung on his back. He was taking them to Miss Cooner in a very large sack. If you didn't get your Renaissance yet, don't worry, be merry. You can pick it up in the attendance office. It's not even scary. Just see Mrs. Cooner with your ID and a smile. Oh, She'll give you a business card and t-shirt so you can leave in style. When Mr. Burns had more to say when he went on his way, he wanted to remind you to go all have fun and play. You see, there's no school tomorrow or the day after that. You're off until the new year, you lucky cat. So don't come back till the 4th or you'll be by yourself. And I smiled when I heard that, in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke no more words, but went straight to work. And he greeted some students and turned with a jerk. Don't forget the birthdays, there are quite a few. If, I have to, if you have to say them all, you would be in a stew. I decided to list them on slides at the end, so birthday wishes we will be able to send. But I heard Burns exclaim, eerie, he walked out of sight, happy birthday to all and to all a good night. Have a safe and happy brainwash. Woo! Hello, Washington students. My name is Samantha Barklow. And my name is Jackson Cates. You're probably wondering why we're on your screen right now. 
Well, Jackson, let's tell them. We are talking to you today to tell you about the caucus, more specifically the Washington Middle School Convention. Jackson, did you just say carcass? No, Sam, I'm not talking about a dead animal. I said caucus. Um, but what's a caucus? The Iowa caucuses is an electoral event in which residents of the U.S. state of Iowa meet in county caucuses in all of Iowa's 69 counties and elect delegates to the corresponding county conventions. There's 99 counties in Iowa, and thus there are 99 conventions. Oh, but how about we try that in English? Essentially what we're talking about here is that you, yes you, will get to help decide who Washington Middle School elects as the Republican and Democratic candidates for the President of the United States. So basically, you guys get to decide who will be our president of Washington Middle School. Oh, Sam. Yeah, Jack? What's up? Shouldn't they know who's running? Oh, right. For the Republicans, we have Donald Trump, a.k.a. Jake Woodward, Ted Cruz, also known as Caden Mueller, Carly Fiorina, or as we like to call her, Anna Mae Wu, Ben Carson, alias Andrew Small, Marco Rubio, a.k.a. Andrew Hafel, Jeb Bush, or Dylan Fair, either one, and Rand Paul, or as she prefers to be called sometimes, Leah Sullivan. That's a lot of Republicans compared to the Democrats. For the three Democrats, we have Martin O'Malley, Anna Demkier, Hillary Clinton, Ava Romagna, and Bernie Sanders, represented by Mariah McKenna. If you were wondering, all of this is up to date, and this December you will begin to see some of these candidates introduce themselves to you, asking for your support. But don't worry, they will thoroughly explain their positions on the issues facing this country, and that will be very entertaining. But in the end, it will be up to you to decide who goes on and who goes home. Yep, thanks for the help of Mrs. Gerdak. So, do you guys have any questions for us? Jackson, we can't see them. Oh, yeah. Well, if you do have any questions, ask Ms. Skirdak, who is located in the 8th grade hallway. Hmm. What should our sign-off be? I don't know. What do you want it to be? Hmm. How about the presidential handshake? Jack, only the president can do that. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Fine. Oi! What are you guys doing in here? This is a restricted area for press conferences only. Get out! Out! You don't have to tell me twice! Wait, is Obama gonna come? Out! to work in a timber. The pay was really good, and so were the working conditions, and for those reasons, the woodcutter was determined to do his best. The first day, the woodcutter chopped down 18 trees and delivered them to his boss. His boss said, congratulations on cutting down so many trees. Keep up the hard work. Motivated by his boss's words, the woodcutter tried even harder the next day, but he could only chop down 15 trees. The third day, he tried even harder, but he could only chop down 10 trees. Day after day, he continued to chop down less and less trees. Frustrated by this, he apologized to his boss and explained, I just can't figure out what the problem is. I must be losing my strength. His boss recognized it wasn't because the woodcutter was getting weaker. When was the last time you sharpened your hatchet? The boss asked. Sharpened? I had no time to sharpen my hatchet. I've been too busy trying to chop down trees. You see, scientists, our lives are like the woodcutters. We sometimes get so busy and work so hard, we don't take time to sharpen the hatchet. Today's world, it seems that everyone is busier than ever, and we forget to, sh to be sharp. There's nothing wrong with activities and hard work, but it's important to not neglect the truly important things in life, like taking time for your friends and family, giving more time to relaxation, and doing the things we really enjoy. We all need time to relax, to think and meditate, to learn and grow. 
if we don't take the time to sharpen ourselves, we'll become dull and lose our effectiveness. So remember, scientists, as you leave for a nice and much-needed holiday break, be sure to take some time for yourself, allowing you to return next year at your sharpest. And stay safe. Lessons in the Lab with Lauren Lawrence.